Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and without him not one thing came into being. This same word that was before time began is the creative word of Genesis 1. This same creative word of Genesis 1 was about to be spoken into time. The word was God, and this word was coming into the world. The word would take on the flesh of the created. It is into this cosmic scene that John enters our text from the first chapter of John's Gospel. What we know of him from this Gospel is simply his name. His name is John. Not John the Baptist, or John the Baptizer, or even John, son of Elizabeth and Zechariah. Matthew, Mark, and Luke tell us these things. What is important here in John's Gospel is that John, just John, is sent from God as a witness. He is here to testify. When asked by representatives of the Jewish leaders, who are you? John tells them who he is not. He is not the Messiah. He is not Elijah. He is not the prophet. Who are you then, they ask. John said that he was a voice. He was a voice, a voice that would give witness. And he gave witness not to himself, but he gave witness to the word, to the light that was coming into the world. Indeed was already in the world the one whom they did not yet know. John was a voice that gave witness so that all might believe through him and through his testimony. Witnesses say what they have seen. They tell what they have heard. And witnesses attest to the truth of their testimony. John declared that the one coming into the world was greater than he. He was not worthy to untie his sandals. John knew his place. It was a humble place in relation to the coming one. In bearing witness, John proclaimed the light as coming into the world. He proclaimed light as coming in darkness. And John would proclaim to his disciples that Jesus was the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. John would tell his disciples to no longer follow him, but to follow this light that had come into the world. John knew that he must decrease while Jesus must increase. For in Jesus, the light of God would scatter the darkness of this world. Jesus would bring an end to darkness and the shadow of death. We can at times be overwhelmed by our knowledge of the darkness of this world. Yes, it can test our faith and challenge our hope, as we know all too well over these last nine months. Drinking so deeply of the world's brokenness, knowing of our own fragility and the smallness of our voice, our witness can be muted 
if not silenced altogether. It is in this time of Advent, as we primarily look to Christ's return in glory, that we remember once again that the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. And that this Word was sent to the world as God had promised and as we had longed and hoped. And we now must understand that this light and life is with us still. As God was faithful in the past by sending his Son, so God's Son would return, fulfilling God's promises as he ushers in the fullness of the kingdom. It is in the fulfillment of God's promises that we rejoice, even in the face of the world's darkness, even in times of uncertainty, doubt, and fear. In this word that is light and life, we have been baptized. The creative word that brought us into being has made us now new creations. We have been named and claimed and made God's witnesses in the world. As witnesses, we are called to reflect the light that has shone upon us. Together with John, we are not the light, but we testify to the light. We are not the world's savior, but we bear witness to its one and only savior. We are to bear witness. With John, we are to be a voice. A voice that testifies to the truth to what we have seen and heard, to what we know, to the one we know. And we have firsthand experience of this Holy One whom we share. Jesus, who is light and life, has come to us, touched us, washed us in holy baptism. He has forgiven and freed us. Jesus knows us, all about us, and yes, we know him. We have been fed and nourished by him. We have feasted at his table. In holy intimacy, we have tasted his flesh and drank his blood. He is not only with us, but resides within us. And having received him, we take him to the world. We point to him and what he has done for us. As we take Jesus to the world, we do so humbly, inviting others into relationship with him. We do not threaten, believe, or perish, but we invite Come and see. Come and see the one we love and the one who loves us. Our call is to give witness, to, fet to testify to the one we know and in whom we place our trust. And John made the way for Christ's coming. And has did he so we must continually allow God to make ever more deeper inroads in us so that God can more and more use us to bring his light and love to a waiting world in desperate need. The roots of our faith must go deeper so that the branches of the tree of faithfulness might spread wider. Our call is to go deeper in the knowledge of our faith as we read and study the scriptures and the applications found in our catechism. We are called to go deeper into our love relationship with God through times of prayer and reflection. Our prayers must move beyond our laundry list of needs and persons to words of love 
and praise and ultimately to moments of silence as we allow God to speak to us in the quiet of our hearts. In our personal prayer, do not say amen too soon, but allow God some moments of silence to speak to us and guide us in the quiet of our hearts. We enter into these faith practices so that we have something cherished and true deep within us, so that we have someone to share with the world as we bear witness to the Word made flesh who is the light and life of the world and who loves us and loves the world with an everlasting love. We give witness to the one who is ever faithful. We give witness to the one we love and who loves us. As our God was faithful in sending the promised Savior so we can trust Christ's promise to come again and fully share with us God's eternal life when God will be all in all. It is this one that we share with the world. It is this one's promises in which we rejoice, even in the midst of darkness, uncertainty, and fear. It is in this one that we place our trust and find our hope and our peace. Amen.